if the FBI was so concerned, and if they weren't targeting Trump, they should have told Trump. If they're really concerned about the Russians infiltrating a campaign, then why not try to stop it? Why not tell Trump? Well, the answer's perfectly clear. To me, they were running this whole story. They were pushing this scam. Great insight. Rush Limbaugh earlier today pointing out, rightly so, that if the FBI is so worried about Russia, Russia trying to infiltrate the Trump campaign, they should have warned him. Here with reaction, former New York City mayor, President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani. Two things. Carter Page on this show last night, Mr. Mayor, th this was the spring of 2016. He's right. never met Donald Trump. And right. Comey's notes, the single biggest unreported part of it was Trump saying to Comey, hey, if any, I didn't collude with Russia, but if anyone around me did, I want you to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. Reaction. Well, the fact is that uh, this investigation never, never should have taken place in the, in the first place. If we consider the counterintelligence investigation, the spying, the spygate, all appropriate uh, descriptions, here's what I want to know. I want to see the documents which Trey Gowdy has never seen, which is outrageous. And I'm not going to let my client testify, the president of the United States, even if he wants to, without those documents being produced and myself and Jay Sekulow, and Jane and Marty, we're going to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. Only if and when we find that this was handled appropriately, and, and there's some evidence on which they could base this phony investigation, will we have them testify. But if there is no evidence, which I assume there is no evidence, then, I mean, uh, he shouldn't testify. The whole thing should be uh, squashed. I mean, it should be ended immediately. And we'll challenge Mueller to write whatever you got, take your best punch with all your 13 uh, Democrats there. Uh, you couldn't find a Republican? Andrew or, Weissman. How about an independent? <laughs> how about you got guys with ethical issues at the Justice Department? I know, I know that because I was a high-ranking official in the Justice Department. So you got a, a, a group there that, that's a, lynch, a lynching mob. So let them do their job. And boy, we're ready to knock the heck out of you with our report, which will be authoritative, it'll be backed up, it'll be backed up with law and facts, and uh, we'll let the American people decide this. You know, uh, some people have criticized my uh, strategy, which is the president's, of, to some extent, playing to the American people. If this were a regular case, I wouldn't be doing it. But the people who will decide this are the people of the United States in the 2018 election. And they, boy, they are switching fast, and the Democrats are running for cover. You don't hear them say the words impeachment anymore. I challenge Maxine Waters to say, say impeachment. Say it. Say impeachment, sweetheart. Just say it. Wow. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to go down. Not maybe you, because they vote for you. I don't know why, but they vote for you. But your colleagues are going to go down. And uh, this, is the, this is the change that we've brought about by engaging and not letting them get away with the unethical behavior that has now outraged Judge Ellis, Judge Wood. You know what she did? She threw Avenatti, the television star of the left-wing CNN and MSNBC, she threw him out of court. He doesn't belong in a New York court. He's not ethical enough. Mr. You know why? Mr. Mayor. Because he's a big liar. And he wanted to debate me. Like, heck, he's going to debate me. He should go debate in some uh, gin mill. You know... You said it earlier, and you're confirming here tonight, that if Mr. Mueller tries to subpoena the president, we will fight this all the way to the Supreme Court. Mark Levin has said the Constitution is on the president's side. Judge Ellis's comments, this going back to a 2005 tax case with Ukraine and Paul Manafort to put the screws to the president so that Manafort sings or composes, supporting perjury, and the hopes that they can prosecute or impeach the president. Well, Sean, I have no fear of it, nor does the president. The president has done nothing wrong. Read my lips. Nothing wrong. So they can, they can and, and none of these people, Manafort, Cohen, they're not going to lie. They can go pound sand. They're not going to lie. What about the spying and the FISA court uh, abuse? Uh, I will, I've been brought up that you lie to, to a judge. Wow. Good luck to Man, you. You've got to go to jail for that. I mean, it's, it's one thing to lie even in a criminal case. Another thing to lie in a counterintelligence probe. Uh, and also the FISA judges really rely even more than a criminal 
uh, Rod Rosenstein judge. signed the final, the final FISA application. Sally Yates signed one. I mean, so what? I mean, so what? But it was it, the, the bulk of it was not. was Hillary Clinton bought and paid for foreign intelligence built Russian lies, yeah, and they never and, corroborated and, it. And, and why? And I'll follow up on Ru what Rush said. Of course, if it wasn't spying, they should have come to the Trump campaign. They could have come to me. My goodness, I was the FBI man of the year that year. They could have come to me, mm -hmm. and they could have told me, and I could have briefed the president, or they could have briefed the president. And now, that would, that and, would have been and, in the spring of 2016. The president never met Carter Page. Ever. To this day, he never met Carter Page. He hasn't met most of these people. He hasn't met most of these people that they allege. And they have an alleged collusion on the part of anybody. Even those Russians, the phony indictment they have of the Russians, who will never come here for trial. They colluded with each other. Russians colluding. Oh, wow, that's big news. Russians have been colluding since the Soviet Union. No. All right, Mr. To Mayor. interfere in our elections. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for being a patriot. Thank you. We really appreciate it, and the president appreciates it, if I may say it's so. It's about the truth, and it's the biggest abuse of power, corruption scandal, everything we talk about with Pfizer, and don't, and fixing don't think, the Hillary don't, investigation, spying don't think on a that, campaign. Don't think that he has any reluctance to be interviewed. He's ready, willing, and able to be interviewed, and he'll, he'll knock him out. It's me and his lawyers that don't want to see the president set I up. I wouldn't allow, if I was a lawyer, this president to go anywhere near any special counsel that hires a guy like Andrew <laughs> Weissman, ever. My, okay. my two cents. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you. This Memorial Day weekend, as we honor more than a million servicemen and women who sacrificed their lives to defend our nation and our freedoms, we come face to face with hard evidence that the deep state planned to take down our duly elected president. A deep state from President Obama on down that did everything in its power to destroy Donald Trump. The latest? A spy placed in the Trump campaign. Sound loony? Well, last year, we thought you'd have to be wearing a tinfoil hat to believe President Trump when he said that he'd been wiretapped. And now we know secret surveillance was conducted on at least seven Trump associates. An unmasking of Americans done at a 350 percent increase in the presidential election year by Obama deep staters. And now we find out a spy was placed by the FBI in the Trump campaign. You can be sure that there's more as the DOJ and FBI fight the release of information sought by Congress. So will they ever admit there was a spy? As best I can tell, it's made up. I don't know where he's getting that from, honestly. And and do you find that to be at all possible or probable? I'm going to just play devil's advocate that there was a spy inserted into his campaign by uh, an intelligence agency. Uh, I don't find it possible and I know it not to be true. I think it's very typical of Mr. Trump to mischaracterize. He's a master of mischaracterization and dishonesty. To label someone as a spy when they're a confidential human source, I think, is doing a disservice uh, to these individuals, but also to the FBI. But like most liars, they can't keep their stories straight. Clapper, on the other hand, pretty much admits there was a spy, and he thinks Trump should be grateful. Was the FBI spying on Trump's campaign? Uh, uh, no, he, they were not. They were spying on a, a term I don't particularly like, but on what the Russians were doing, trying to understand were the Russians infiltrating, trying to gain access, trying to gain leverage and influence. So which, why doesn't he which like is what they do? So why doesn't he like that? He should be happy though. Well, he should doing. be. <laughs> if ever you weren't sure who to believe, I'm going to make this real easy for you. The Obama administration was so determined to get Hillary Clinton elected and Donald Trump defeated that they let Hillary skate on her criminal activity and created a narrative of criminal activity on the part of Donald Trump. They created a false predicate, a made-up dossier, paid for by Hillary Clinton, the DNC, and the FBI in order to get a court to approve spying on Trump's campaign. And they were allowed to spy on the campaign for a year. They kept it close. Only the highest level of the FBI, not the field offices. The highest levels worked together to take Trump down. They planned insurance in the event their girl Hillary didn't win. They leaked information harmful to Donald Trump to the press. And it was ahead of the FBI at the behest of James Clapper, who privately told the president about the fake dossier, so that they could leak it to the press and the world. So who are you going to believe? 
take a look at this chart. They're all liars. James Comey, the head of the FBI, lied about whether he had ever been an anonymous source in news reports about the Trump or Clinton investigation. He replied, never. But Mr. Leaker himself had to admit that he did so. Comey also lied before Congress when he testified that he briefed the president about the dossier because he learned the media was about to report on it. In truth, Comey briefed Trump for the very purpose of getting that dossier out to the public. And Comey said his investigation of Hillary was thorough. In truth, he wrote an exoneration memo long before essential witnesses were even interviewed. And of course, his deputy director, Andrew McCabe, that I didn't even put on my chart, lied so many times the guy had to be fired. And to get someone to fire in that agency is amazing. And Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who pushed to call the Clinton investigation a matter, lied when she said there were no emails between her department and the FBI when she used an email with a fake name to write about her infamous tarmac meeting with former President Clinton. James Clapper, another hoot, the director of the National Intelligence Agency, pretty much lies whenever he opens his mouth, like when he lied before Congress in answer to a quite direct question about whether or not his agency collected data on hundreds of millions of Americans. He said no, not wittingly. He also lied about the Trump dossier, saying he never leaked it to CNN. He since admitted that he did, and now he's on CNN's payroll. John Brennan, head of the CIA, lied and said the Steele dossier was not part of the intelligence community's ev evidence on Russian interference in the 2016 election. And again, liars not being able to keep their stories straight, he was contradicted by Clapper. Now, you remember Susan Rice. Her lying started long before Benghazi and that despicable video. She also lied and said that in the final days of the Obama administration, she knew nothing about the surveillance of President-elect Trump and people around him. And she knew nothing about identities being unmasked. Shortly thereafter, she came clean, telling House investigators she unmasked senior Trump officials. And the big kahuna at the top, just before the inauguration, President Obama created new rules that allowed intelligence historically protected within one agency to be spread across at least 16 agencies, signaling to his people, let it all hang out and leak your heart away on Trump. So I, for one, am sick and tired of these liars, leakers, and liberals attacking our president and our democracy when they are the ones who tried to frame him. Here's a primer for all of you. If you're going to set up a president to try to frame him, do it against someone who's dumber than you are.